I'm Julie Bartke with Session Update. Unionizing daycares, it's an issue that sprung up during the last legislative session but it was quickly silenced. This year it's back and the bill sponsors discussed why they think the issue should go through the legislative process during a news conference earlier today. Nearly all family providers are women. More than half, more than uh, half have 10 years of experience. A quarter have more than 20 years of experience, and 22 percent have a bachelor's degree. More than half use a formal learning curriculum in their home-based program. On average, they're open 11 hours a day, five days a week, 50 weeks a year, and some care for children on weekends and at night. They're paid less than minimum wage, about $4.95 an hour in the metro area and about $2.83 an hour in greater Minnesota, according to DHS. And 16 states already give providers the legal right to bargain collectively. Why do we want a union? Family child care providers work alone in their homes. They're often isolated from peers who do the same work, face the same challenges, and have the same aspirations for their businesses and their profession. They're affected by county inspectors, state regulators, and elected politicians. They need a real seat at the table so that they have a direct say on the rules, policies, and rates that affect the care they provide. Child care providers in Minnesota, based on the reimbursement rates, earn less than a minimum wage. They earn $4.95 in the metro area and about $2.83 in greater Minnesota. That's why many of them cannot afford to stay in business. That's why 39 percent of the family child care providers in Minnesota have gone out of business in the last decade. They are the most affordable option for working parents. If you compare the cost of family child care, home-based, with center-based care, what you will find is that care in a center is $6,000 more each year for an infant and $3,500 more for a four-year-old. What we want to do is empower family child care providers to collectively bargain with the state on the rates and the regulations regarding how they do business. As a majority of providers in the state of Minnesota, we do not choose to be unionized. We do not choose to have the union represent us. We choose to remain independent, small business women because the majority of us are women. We have chosen our occupations. We have extremely good training in the state of Minnesota. If you look at the state and how we represent against other states, our training is excellent. We already have a group who legislates for us. I believe we heard uh, that providers are getting paid $2 something an hour and $4 something an hour. That's per child. So if they only have one child in their home, that's not a healthy business. They're not going to get rich off that and they're not going to be able to pay their bills. We have a limit up to um, 10 and 14 children in a home with a helper if you are a licensed provider, legally licensed provider. If you add, if you add $10 per um, f you know, 10 times 4, and add that up, you're actually making a pretty good living wage. And a self, a smart business owner is not going to absorb the cost of union dues. They will pass that on to the provider, or to the consumer, which would be the parents. Already, some of them struggling to make those um, child care payments. You're making pretty good money in your view? Some yeah. providers, Parker. some providers are. It's a business. It's a business that, you know, but there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of profit margin. And so that profit margin is going to be siphoned to the unions. I think that's wrong. You are watching news conferences detailing the Child Care Collective Bargaining Act, the proponents and the opponents. And as you heard, it would allow about 9,000 child care providers who receive state subsidies to collectively bargain in areas of concern. The issue was brought to the legislature last session, but opponents quickly reacted, stating it was a solution without a problem and it would also further drive up costs of daycare. So again, you were just watching that news conference and we will continue to track the legislation as it moves through the committees in both the House and the Senate.